looking at initial jobless claims, the numbers coming in much better than even forecast. We thought we'd go down to 1,100,000, but for the first time in 21 weeks, we are below 1,000,000. 963,000 jobless claims last week. That is a decrease of 228,000 from the week before. The continuing claims number comes in at uh, 15,486,000. So that's a decline from uh, 16,107,000 the week before. So a bit of a uh, decline here. The first time we have seen that in quite some time. Pandemic unemployment assistance, the extra assistance that goes out to those who are self employed, gig workers, 488,000. 622. That's a decline of almost 200,000 as well from the prior week. These are uh, one week delayed. The total number of people receiving jobless benefits of one sort or another falls to 28,257,995. If you want to be specific, that's down from 31,323,000 July 18th. Now, this uh, total number receiving is from July 25th, the last week of July. That's two weeks delayed, but basically an improvement all around in the jobless claims numbers, but you got to keep in mind, of course, that these numbers are still extraordinarily inflated. The highest jobless claims numbers we ever saw before the pandemic, 625,000 in one week, and now we're still uh, up at 963,000. So big decline, but still very huge. That's where I wanted to go, this idea of the pace of the recovery, how quickly that number is going down. What do you hear from the economists that you speak with, with the Fed officials that you speak with in terms of the progress of the improvement or the less badness of this labor market? Well, you're seeing people go back to work as cities and uh, states open up. The issue has been how many people go back to work and then either find their jobs been eliminated because the company is gone or they are uh, sent back on furlough because the COVID uh, virus flared up again. It appears there's still a significant number of people who are in that uh, state, but we are seeing now people starting to go back to work. It'll be interesting to see how all of this figures into people's estimates for August employment this week, not last week, not the 963,000, but this is the week of the employment survey. So we'll see if uh, uh, next Thursday, if we had made progress during this week, that might give people some hope. Look, the absolute numbers, as you point out, Mike, are utterly terrible. But if you look at the continuing trend, things are improving. Progress, a positive sign for the market. Lisa asked the question, would good news be bad news or would good news be good news for this market right now? Good news apparently is no news. Equity futures hardly moving at all. The S&P 500 unchanged in the bond market. Ten-year Treasury yields where they were, 0.68%. The dollar not moving much either. Mike, there is a question, though, that we've been asking over the last several weeks, almost anticipating this data rolling over. Yes, the improvement has slowed, but I just wonder if the economic data, Mike, is just testing some people's premise that maybe this economy is a little bit more resilient than people have given it credit for. It may be. There's a whole range of high-frequency data. Jobless claims are one of the ones that everybody looks at, retail sales uh, and, uh, and the like. Uh, the Johnson Red Book retail sales numbers went up last week, but other numbers have shown uh, either a flattening or a decline. The open table numbers for restaurants were down this week. The TSA numbers uh, in terms of the number of people getting on planes were down by about 200,000 yesterday. So there's some numbers that are good, some numbers that are not so good, and uh, some just kind of flat. It's kind of hard to get a, a total reading on this, but as we were talking about earlier, Fed officials see the economy in sort of stall speed at this point, flying but not gaining altitude.